Well, hello guys and welcome to the next video. So right now we're going to do the validation that I spoke about in the last video. So let's get started. First of all, I want to um, show you one of the gotchas that you can um, get with a MongoDB. Um, let's let's see. So for example, let's um, get a list of our users currently. So these are the ones that we um, that we made in the previous videos and if you remember we have a route that enables us to query for a particular user by their ID so let's do that let's simply use this one and as you can see that works but what if instead of this um, particular ID we, um, s we were to send some made up text so let's try something like that should be good enough and if you try to to send this request you get this error message that um, cast to object ID failed for that value because this value over here isn't the ID format that uh, MongoDB expected so this is this is like um, an example of why you need to do validation but of course you need to do validation um, for many other different things but this is just like example so you can quickly see if you aren't doing any validation, these are sort of troubles that you can get yourself in. So um, let's get started. Now, as far as validation in Express.js goes, you have uh, uh, many different options. Um, let me show you some of them. So as you can see this package over here called Express-validator um, is a really popular one. Um, you can see all of its documentation on this github page but um, what I kinda dislike about this one is because you need to pretty much uh, validate every single field or property on the object in a, in a line so if you have like um, if you're sending like a lot of different um, properties um, this can get really long and I found this other um, thing that is called Joy, which I really like because it enables you to kind of define, uh, kind of define something like schema. You can see like here, and then you can simply validate um, the object that is um, going on against that schema, and then you can either get like that validation passed or that it failed and you can get uh, why it failed so for these reasons we're going to stick with joy in this series so let's install it um, as you can see here um, well it's not specified but you just need to do npm install joy or yarn add joy so let's do that so I'm going to open my um, my commander I'm going to um, quit this quit this um, working instance of server and let's add it so I'm going to type yarn add joy like this okay and now it's done so let me simply restart the server okay so now what we need to do well if you take a look um, here um, for example let's start with validating params because that's kind of faster to do and because we can solve that issue of wrong ID format right away so for example when we are getting a current user by their ID this is the place where we need to validate that this param is actually in the format that MongoDB expect, expects it to be now we can do this in a variety of different ways we can actually just go inside of a controller and find that function it, it is called get user get user is over here and before we do this we can actually um, validate it so let's do that for now but then uh, we're going to be more flexible about it and then we're going to actually create a new file in this helpers folder but for now let's get um, let's get a basic sense of how joy works and use it inside of here so first of all I need to get a handle on the joy module that I just installed so let's define it const joy equals require um, joy like this okay then we need to create a ID schema uh, we need to basically describe to joy 
what we're looking for um, in the ID and then we can test against that. So let's create a new schema up above. I'll call it um, ID schema like this. And then um, we need to assign to that joy.object and then the keys and this keys function is going to take an object and now in this object we need to describe the, the ID so we will only have one uh, field over here um, let's call it let's call it like like this user ID okay and it will need to be of a type joy.string now we are going to use regular expressions if you are not used to them don't worry um, we are just going to use them for this bit over here so using regular expression we can basically describe what kind of a text we are interested in and it's, it is pretty flexible so to get started we need to put um, two slashes like this and now what we want well at the beginning of our user ID uh, MongoDB format for ID is that it should be 24 characters long and it should contain the following characters so any number from 0 to 9 then any letter from A to F both uppercase and lowercase so to describe that get started we need to start with a caret symbol um, this one and that specifies like the beginning of the line um, you also have a dollar symbol that specifies ending of a line so we want to say at the beginning of the line we want those characters that I just um, taught you about so we want to put them inside of a screw square braces like this and we need simply to list them so as we said we want from 0 to 9 then from A to F and then through A to F but this time capital ones and we need um, them to be exactly 24 characters long so inside of these squiggly braces I, I'm hoping I'm not n calling them the wrong name but if I do I apologize uh, we need 24 characters and then we want that to be the end of the matched text now we also need to take on that this is actually required field so there is a function that required and as you can see you can chain them um, like this so we just call like three functions on this joy um, object over here okay so now that we have that we need to actually test that against our get user over here okay so let's do that so I'm going to call joy.validate I'm going to to pass the the request dot params field in there and I'm going to then provide the schema that we want to check against so the ID schema like this now this function over here will return a result that um, if there is an error there will be um, error property appended to that object and if it's not then everything went fine so let's save that return value somewhere and I'm going to create a new variable called simply results sorry like this okay now we can console log the contents of the result variable that we just created and let's give it a spin so um, we have server listening over here and if I come here again and let's use the valid ID and I'm going to send it and as you can see what we got in this result object is error is null and the value is actually this so also what joy um, does for you is it encapsulates your value inside of the value property over here and this is exactly the, the, f the property that we can reference to get a handle on our now validated um, piece of the input um, but let's see what happens when we don't provide the ID in a valid format so let's provide code worker like this and let's send it and now as you can see um, yeah we get a long long error but if we find it you can see the result object that we have and we have error here 
and we have a reason um, child user ID failed because didn't match the required regular expression pattern and then we have a whole stack trace so that works okay awesome but um, we can do it like this and, and also like right now we wouldn't then reference it like this but instead here we would use result.value.userID um, like that but we don't want really to um, do it like this at least that's not my preference because then my controller is kind of polluted with all that vali validation I prefer to have it set somewhere else so then when I'm inside of this controller I know that the uh, all the data has already been validated and now I'm ready to work with it so we're going to create a helper that I have been talking to you about and let me simply change that like it was for now so let's create a new file inside of our helpers folder and let's call it route helpers like that okay so now in this route helpers we need to get a handle once again on our joy um, dependency okay and now we actually what we want here is we want to have a function and a schema and that function will be kind of a generic function that we can provide multiple schemas so we can reuse it for all our validations in this application so um, because I also need to later on export it so I have two ways to do that I can do something like function um, validate param and then something and then at the end I can do modulus dot exports is equal object and then I can simply do validate param equals validate param or if you're using ES6 like you should be this will be the same as that but still um, that's that's unnecessary code because we can right from the start actually do that so I'm going to go module dot exports equals an object and then this object will have, will have a property called validate param and then a function I'm um, similarly to how we define them inside of our controllers if you remember we have module dot exports and then multiple properties that are in fact functions so right here inside of this validate param function um, let's let's uh, make it expect a schema and a name okay now what that will, will do is the schema will be the schema that we want to check against and the name is actually the name of the param that we want to check it against the schema so uh, to move on um, let's simply let's simply write this and then I'll explain it a bit more so write return request response next and then again a fat arrow function like this and inside of here uh, let's console.log um, request.params and see what's in there so the whole idea is to be able to use this validate param not inside of here but instead here before we actually call get user so in effect we are writing a middleware that is going to check all the validations for us so in this file over here um, let's get a handle on that function that we just wrote so I'm going to go here and now there are a couple of different ways that you can do it one way is you can go const validate param is equal to require then we need to get a location that file so we're in a routes folder we need to go up one directory and then there is a helpers folder and then inside there is a route helpers.js okay and then okay we don't need JS and then we can go dot and validate param but what we can also do is we can actually do it in the kind of more shorter way so we can use um, these type of braces and then it will it will actually be the same so it will fetch this thing in our um, case this is a function from this file
if we had multiple function in here we could simply like append them so let's say later on we will have validate body and that's how we can get a handle on that function as well so for now let's stick with validate param one and let's use it inside of here so I'm simply going to call it validate param okay and after so now it will work like this whenever this get um, request is hit it will first execute this function and if everything is fine it will continue to execute this one that's how we can validate things before they actually arrive at get user so here if you remember the, the definition of this function we are expecting a schema and a name so for schema we don't have one for now but for name it will be um, user ID as we declare it over here so let's like make placeholder schema here but for the second ar argument we can actually provide user ID now actually let's write that schema so we already wrote it if you remember in this file over here but we need to move it to our route helpers okay so let's um, cut it go to route helpers and now this um, will also export an object and um, that is called schemas and that actually will contain all the schemas for our current project so to start off let's simply paste this one and now let's fix it so first of all we don't want a variable declaration here instead we just want to provide a name id schema should be fine and then to that property we want to assign joy.object and we don't need semicolon here so now back in our routes file we can simply come here and first of all we need to pull that schemas object so let's do that schemas like this okay and now right here we can come and we can say schemas dot and then the id schema that we're interested in so now let's simply um test it using postman so we can see whether our um whether our validate param function over here actually has a handle on request dot params so i'll come here i'll simply use anything um, and as you can see request.params has a value called user id that has a value then of code worker so this is definitely working so far and we are able to to access it inside of there so this is definitely working right now and we have an access to that um, value over here so now what we need to do here well um we need to use the joy.validate function that we used in controllers a few minutes ago and do the checking inside of there so um, what we want to do is again have a variable um, let's call result that is going to be returned by joy.validate and then we want to validate something against our schema now okay we have a schema here so we can simply type it over here like schema but what about our field so right now how that's going to work is we're going to to create a new object inside of here okay bear with me this this is kind of confusing at first like let me explain what, what the problem is right now we have an id for this route over here and we call it user id which is perfect but remember later on when we add a cars route in here the file called cars.js it will have something like um, let me quickly do something it will have something like car id okay now we can uh, hard code that the every time validate param should check something that field is going to be called user id but that is a bad practice obviously because later on when we introduce the car id that won't work so what we want is we want to abstract from the actual names and use something abstract that then we can later on provide for this example user id for this we will provide car id and internally validate param function will map these um, property names 
and actually check how it should do that. So, because of that, this is going to be a bit weird at first, but it will make sense, I promise. What we want to check against this schema is a new object that we will create now at this spot over here, and that object will simply have one property called param, which is generic enough, and that param is going to be request. We want to access the params property inside it. So if you remember, um, request is like an object, and that object uh, has params like a second object inside of there. So we want to access that um, object, and then we want to access the name that we provided over here. So for example, there could be user ID, and we want to to get a handle on this value over here. So we can. So now these params over here. Um, we can do it in several different ways. We can use request.params like this, but whenever we don't know the actual name of this property, but instead that value is stored in some variable, like in this case dot name, we need to use this bracket notation and then we can simply pass the name. So this um, let's make sure this is perfectly clear. So we have this line. Let's say that in our scenario, a name is actually of a type user ID. This entire line over here would simply be equal to request.params.userID. So that should be um, clear enough. We're creating a new object that we're going to check against this schema, and that object will have a single property called param, and its value is going to is going to be equal to the value that is provided here. And there is one small change that we need to make right here. We had a hard coded user ID name, but because this is like generic function that we're going to use all over the place, we're going to call it guess what this. And then, as you can see, once this becomes something like, say, um, user ID goes here, blah, 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 then this, as you can see, can perfectly get checked against this because they share the same name. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too, um, too confusing. I'm not sure if I did a good enough job explaining that, but you'll see it over and over again and it should make more sense as time goes by. So now we can um, so now we can check that and we get stored uh, and we get results stored in this results variable. So now let's actually check that um, variable and see whether or not it contains any errors. So I'm going to go if result dot errors sorry error exists then we'll do something error happened and else all is good and we can basically send it to the controller so if error happened what we want is pretty much to do some sort of an early exit so we don't want to continue our path to user controller dot get user but instead we want to reply back to the client that something was wrong and send along the message uh, about what actually got wrong so the client can fix that mistake on their end so we are going simply to go return res.status if you see we still have access to the res and request and next so we can pretty much do anything we would usually do in the controller so we can respond back to our client with the status code of 400 and then with a json of result.error okay um, if that's not the case we want to effectively continue so this line over here will allow us to basically um, transfer the control back to this function over here but what we also want to do is we want to modify this request um, object over here so by the time we are inside of our controller if we wanted to get a user ID for example we want to get it like this so this was like old way and new way would be something like um, const user ID is equal to request dot um, value dot perhaps and whenever we fetch a value from this request dot value which is our custom made construct we know that that value 
have passed our validation and we can be sure that that is actually validated so to do that we need to come back here and create that request.value object so we can simply check whether the request.value already exists in case we like remember sometimes maybe in the future I don't think that would be the case here but don't hold me on that um, sometimes you want to um, you want to validate multiple params okay so example let's say here let's say that we needed for some reasons to have like car ID over here then we would need to do um, this validate param would need to be called twice and in that scenario in the first pass request.value wouldn't exist and this will create it but in the second pass we don't want simply to override it with then this car ID value but instead we want to append that car ID value so by the time we get here this request.value.params actually contains both the user ID and the car ID so for that reasons we're, we're going to create this to be more flexible from the start so it can fit many of your different needs so we can simply check if that that object doesn't exist then we will simply create one and we will initialize it to an empty object that should take care of that next we want to check whether that object um, that value object contains um, params uh, property so like this and again similar thing if it doesn't contain that we want to create one request.value um, property of the name params and then we want to assign that property to an empty object and now we have everything in place to actually assign um, the value that is stored inside of here if you remember over here sorry um, let me scroll okay this took quite a bit of time but as you can see here inside of this result object we have a um, value sub object that contains our named property with the actual value so right here we want then to say okay so append um, to our request a value sub object um, that has params um, property on it and then that, ob that sub object called uh, params will contain now this particular field the name of this particular field is the name defined here so like this and what we want to assign to that is the validated value returned by this function called validate so result dot value dot param because right now we named it to this generic name param so that should be it for this function if I come here now let's delete this old way okay so now if you remember we are using this new this new object that we just appended to the request um, parameter and now here we can use it like this so if this works now we know that this user ID isn't fetched just from like request.params but it is returned actu actually by our newly defined function over here that actually checks it so let me just save everything okay everything is good I need delete this and let's give it a shot let's even try the instance where it should fail first so if we do this we get um, error back that is quite in-depth of what happened and let me scroll down to the bottom of this okay so as you can see everything is fine so this route returned back with 400 status code like this this was never touched so that's good and let me go to some um, some valid thing like this as you can see this also works so this definitely worked that we just enabled and yeah everything is looking fine so far so I know this video has been a long one but this introduced quite a big concept uh, moving on what we'll need to do is inside of our route helpers file we need to create a similar function 
that is going to be used for validating a body and then later on we simply need to um, tack on here more schemas and this is actually thing that you can simply copy and paste into any of your future projects and these functions I believe are generic enough that can be reused over and over again so like I said this is a long one but moving forward um, once we have this in place and when we have the valid body in place this will all get really faster and we can move on to some more interesting things I'll also delete this comment it's unnecessary to stay there okay so this is the end of this video thank you for staying with me for so long if you have any suggestions by the way if you think about something that, that I can do in a better way or improve something please let me know I'm looking for all the feedback that I can get so that both you and I can improve over time. So I'll see you in the next video, thanks for watching and bye for now.